The health system, uh, for the purposes of this discussion, can be divided into, into two big chunks. Um, one is the health care system, and one is the public health system. Uh, the health care system are the hospitals and the clinics that we go to when we get sick. Uh, they tend to be very energy intensive. Uh, in this country, we spend a tremendous amount of our health care dollars in the last couple of months of life, uh, where we uh, do incredible interventions uh, to buy people maybe a couple of extra weeks, but, but we spend a lot of our health care dollars in those last uh, few months of life, and uh, this is in the health care system in the hospital. Uh, the public health system, our local health departments, county health departments, uh, public health departments at the state level, at the federal level, which do a lot of that prevention stuff. They inspect factories, they inspect um, uh, restaurants, they uh, evaluate the quarter, uh, quality and safety of water. Uh, and <clears throat> um, if you look at uh, the U.S health system in terms of those two big chunks. We spend a lot more money on health care services than we do on public health and prevention. And uh, when we have economic downturns in this country, uh, what usually gets cut first is public health budgets. So the public health infrastructure is dramatically threatened uh, by economic downturns. And peak oil is going to cause economic downturns, so I have a lot of worries about all the things that we do at the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. The other problem is that <clears throat> um, another big public health function is in our disaster preparedness and response. And if you look at what's going on in Haiti, if you look at what happened with Katrina, that involved the tremendous uh, mobilization of resources generally uh, through the air, which required a lot of uh, liquid fossil fuels. And uh, how are we exactly going to do disaster preparedness and response uh, when energy is much more expensive? Um, how exactly would a response to Haiti look like uh, in the coming era of energy scarcity? So uh, I'm most worried about um, uh, the public health system the degree to which we use uh, transportation in healthcare and public health, and the degree to which we use transportation in emergency uh, preparedness and response, uh, because transportation costs are going to be the first things that will be affected. Uh, so uh, I think our Achilles heel in our health system in this country is the public health system uh, first. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, teaching students who come to the School of Public Health to get an MPH degree or a doctoral degree. I spend a lot of time talking to neighborhood groups, business groups. And what's uh, amazing to me is I'll typically start out my, my discussions asking the audience, uh, how many of you have heard of climate change? And, you know, two-thirds of people obviously have heard of climate change. What percentage of you believe uh, that climate change is caused by human activity? Now, that question is usually... Uh, how many respond yes to that question it depends a lot on who the audience is um, and we tend to have a real politicized kind of answer to that question about who believes climate change is caused by human activities but but there are still a, a large number of people who believe that climate change is caused by human activities what percentage do you think that climate change will affect uh, the the lives of you your children your grandchildren again a decreasing percentage but some people uh, believe that one also and then you get to the question of how many of you guys know of peak oil? How many of you have heard of peak oil? How many of you have heard of Hubbard's Peak? How many of you have thought about the implications of energy scarcity? Usually one or two percent have heard of that. And so it's amazing to me how uh, uh, little is known and understood about the issue of energy scarcity and the peaking of oil production in the uh, U.S. population. Now, what's also fascinating is that at the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, where it, a, a lot of what we do is petroleum dependent there, uh, and yet the faculty, uh, a very dedicated and uh, active group, many of the faculty at the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health don't know about peak oil and its implications.